Hello everyone, my name is Marisha. Today I want to talk about those who confront the enemy at the gate. Who are those? Those are our children. Children of God will do that. But you will not be able to confront the enemy at the gate. What do I mean by confronting the enemy at the gate? Because you know, the Lord told Cain, Hey, if you do what's right, I will accept it. If you do wrong, I will not accept it. And to watch out because... Sin lies behind the door. So death, darkness is right next to you. In the gate, that's an entry point. The enemy can come through there. Or the Lord, who is knocking at your door? Who are you allowing to knock at your door? Who are you allowing to rely on, have decision making, or motivate you? Who is doing, who is Who's at the entry point? Who is knocking at the door? Who is coming by force at your door? Who is banging? Who are you opening doors to? Who is giving access to your heart and to your mind? Remember, your eyes are gates, your ears are gates. This is access to like information can come into your soul. Your soul, you are like a sponge. You absorb, even though you could be in a place with a lot of people. And you're like, oh man, I had a better dream ever. Yeah, because one, if you didn't pray, because, you know, most of the day. So if you didn't pray anything, I supposed to wash you today. It could be like a crazy day because you around people and the most of the day. That's where our dreams come from. So, and now you've been with our dreams, your emotions, how you felt throughout the day. The anger, sadness, the lust, the loneliness, the rejection, um, suicidal thoughts, very happy, very happy, joyful, excited, whichever emotion it sticks to your soul and you have to be washed you have to be washed because even this can be on you as well depending on how much you how long how much how long you expose you to expose yourself to evilness like remember your eyes are gates what you're looking at oh you want to watch a 30 30 a three hour horror movie okay that is part of your soul and then that gets into your mentality it comes like in your bloodstream your blood takes record why do I say that? Abel, when his blood was on the rock, was crying unto the Lord. Like, murder murder happened, and it was crying unto the Lord. Like, he, he's, been mur he's been murdered. So, yo, his blood. I remember hearing a testimony of a person. A person murdered a female. And then uh, somebody, the person who, who died, their heart was given to somebody else. And this person... Who had the heart kept having dreams and to find out the dream that she was having about the murder is they find, that's how they find out the murder they, that's how they find out who killed the person because the dream that she kept having was very vivid and she was accurate this person killed it like yes your blood takes record your dna takes record you learn that epige epigenetics is something people are just now learning but this has been talking about the lord like your forefathers, what the word of God talks about your forefathers. This is how they are. You're just like them. So that's why you have mentalities of your grandparents, mother, father, or we're going way back to Adam and Eve. Rebellious, sin. You're born in iniquity. But that does not mean I was born this way. No, Jesus Christ died for you so you can be born again. Receive his Holy Spirit to be renewed in your mind, to be renewed in your heart. So you can obey and walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Because if you walk after the flesh, you are carnally minded. And to be carnally minded is death. You're dead like a dead man walking dead bones. Dead bones. You're the walking dead. You're dead. Going to hell like day by day. Just leading to it because your decision making hates God. You rebel against God. God says, say yes. You say, you say no. God says, no. You say yes. What you, what you say is evil, you say it's good. When God says it's good, you say it's evil. So your mind is messed up. You're reprobate. You're stubborn. You're rebellious. You don't care. You do what you think is best. Like, I know what's best for me because I'm going to live my best life. So I'm going to drink up. I'm going to party up. I'm going to sleep around because you know what? This heartache, I'm lonely for Valentine's Day. So I'm going to be with anybody, whoever. I don't care. I don't care. Matter of fact, I'm going to be married. You know what? My husband didn't treat me, treat me like Edward in Twilight. I'm not loved. So I'm going to go with his best friend or this. Like, however, the, the ridiculousness, the foolishness in your heart will lead you. Because, yeah.
there's evilness in your heart. And you will do foolish things. You'll be a foolish woman. You'll be a whorish woman. You learn about these women in Proverbs. It tells you about like that. That's how. That's wisdom. It tells you like right there. One starts off has wisdom as a she is a female. She calls out people, telling people like, hey, you need me. But people refuse. And then it tells you, hey, stay away from these type of women. Women can be deceptive. Like, which woman are you? Especially if you're in the house of God. Like, you can be a whorish, a deceptive, a manipulative, a horrible woman. And this woman, she can also tear down her home with her words. I don't care. It's the truth. This is how I feel. I say what I want when I want. That, like, no. Word of God says, your belly will be fruit filled with the fruit of your mouth. So whatever you're saying, you're going to eat it up. You think, why do, I, why do I have stomach pain? Why do I have this? Like, yeah, because the word of your mouth is bitter. Your word of is not fruitful. It's death. And people forget that scripture. People only you use that scripture when you want us to tell them, hey, that's not bad. Like, you're going to live a bad life. Oh, you're speaking death over me. You know, the power of the tongue is life and death. But yet, you, your mouth, you yourself can't brow to your tongue. So be mindful. That's why you need to ask the Lord for wisdom. Like, you need wisdom. And you, it's never too much wisdom. Solomon had wisdom. Nobody had wisdom like him before or after him. But yet, towards the end, his, his heart was turned away from the Lord. So, you, that t so that tells you, hey, you need wisdom. There is a worldly wisdom, essential wisdom, and natural wisdom, which is evil. And the Lord see, sees as foolish, like the way the world thinks is why. Like, yes, the word you talked about, that the people, um, believers, they're crafty. And they're wise in their own way, meaning they can get things done when they want it. But they don't care. They have no boundaries. Like, no, I'll go beyond. The sky is the limit, as the world would say. The sky is the limit. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get this, this, this done. Because I want it. I want to be successful. I want to retire by this time. So I'm going to put my over. I'm going to do, while I'm young, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to work hard. I'm going to do what I want so I can retire early. So people doing well, but Christians, we should be obedient while we're young so we can retire early. Retire early with the Lord. He's like, leave me with us. He's not honest too much, like because since you've been faithful all your life, you built momentum and longevity, faithfulness unto the Lord. You confronted the devil. Remember the youth, you confront the devil. In your strength, you confront the devil. As a child, your sins are your sins have been forgiven in your belief in Jesus Christ. As a youth, you confront the devil and you worked hard in the Lord. And when you get as you get older, yes, since you knew those from the you knew God from the beginning and you knew those of the old time. So you're gonna be rewarded for being faithful unto the Lord. But no, what happens when you start to compromise? It doesn't take all of that. What do you mean? You, know, you stop judging me. You, to to be a Jew, you gotta win. To win a Jew, you gotta be a Jew. So you know, I gotta be like the world to gain the world. Like no, you do not. That's what Satan tells you. He will do that. Okay, pretend to be a Christian and have the Christians vote for you. You get your political party. Go to the churches. Yeah, you got this mayor, governor, president. Come to your church. Vote for me. Is this person going to repent? So, like, what's coming out to God for? Because is that pastor, whoever, whomever allowed, whomever allowed that person to be in the church, to be in the pulpit, does he give you a place in office in the court system? Does he give you a place in the Supreme Court? Does he give, like, no, he does not. Oh, he's going to support us. Okay. Everybody voted for him. But things got bad. Nobody supported. Close the doors of your church. Like, what? Where? I thought you was going to help your church. I thought you were going to, like, no. You were just greedy. You just don't want to pay tax for the church. You want it to... To get some, what's it called? Because you're only already not exempt, so you want other benefits, okay? So we could be leading as a church. We don't have all these rules that the city has. You don't want the city like no. We we got you, we got you. We want to build a school without paying taxes. We want to do this. We want to be governmentally funded. So that's why we we just greedy. People are greedy. People in the house of God are greedy. You're making the house of God place of thieves rather than a house of prayer like this is a place of prayer this is a prayer a place where judgment begins first 
because to what is given, much is required. So you're a pastor, you're a teacher, you're a apostle, you're a prophet, you're evangelist, whomever, bishop, deacon, you're a leader in the church. But yet you desire mon monetary money, saying you want money from the people. You want money from the government, you want money for the people. They pay you, so you say what they want to hear with their itching ears and accent. I know what to pray about. It's Valentine's Day. It's Sunday. It's a day of love. God loves you. The blood in it. You know what? Since you were lazy for that day, we're going to watch the Jesus movie. Remember his love. Remember, remember your love. Remember your first love because he first loved you. Yes, so Jesus, yes, he loves you. Like, yes, amen. Yes, he does love you. But no. But they have to understand that Jesus, he does love and he will judge. Trust me. People, people say it. Only God can judge me. Gay, lesbian, a murderer, a criminal, a thief, porn star, a drug dealer, whomever. Only God can judge me. Okay. So you're saying you don't want man to say anything, but you want God to say something. All right. Yes, the God, God's wrath is going to pour out. His fury is going to come. And people are going to know, like, hey, it was God who did that. Nobody, nobody else could do that. But 9-11 came. People were met. People went to church. People went to church. The churches were flooded like, whoa. But now, when the Lord's going to come, confront, and coming to judge America, because they knew God. They knew God. They know the works of God. They know the gospel. The word is spread it abroad. All 50 states, even Washington, D.C., come on now. They know the word of God. But yet they live as heathens. They live like the world. They think it's okay. They think it's acceptable. Yeah, and you know better. You know better as a leader. But you say things they want to hear, what pleases them. You, you, you motivate the ungodly in the church, the unbelievers. You understand? You in a crowd. In America are people who are greedy. They love money. They love money. Why do I say that? They get mad when that income tax does not come on time. They get mad, go crazy, when the stimulus does not come on time. They get mad when gas prices come down. They get mad when taxes go up. They're ready to pick up and move and go somewhere cheaper. People who live and go somewhere cheaper or go somewhere and get more money. Either they look for a place that's cheap to live or a place to get more money. What, what am I going to do? What do I want? Do I want to save money so I can go to a place where it's cheaper living and everything? Okay, do I want to get more money and live big? Okay, go to a place to get money and live big, you know? I want to be seen out of the world. I want influence. Money gives me influence. Money gives me power. I have access to it. So I will do anything to get the money. I will sleep with whomever. I will network with whomever. I will make an oath. I will pledge. I will do who this, that. Just to get the money, because the money talks, the money talks. Because I want to wear the name brands. I want to have the nice car. I want the big house. Like, yeah. That's what people want. And once they have it, oh, I've reached success. And I'm successful. But when Lord judgment come, it destroys all of that. What success do you have? What is true success? You got that will success have your monetary things on earth. But no, the word of God says success. For those who keep his commandment, those who keep the law, who keep the word, and they don't forget, they meditate it day and night. These are the ones who God's blessed. Because God said, who will make the rich work so hard just to give it to his children? Like the church, like when the children of Israel had to confront and fight other nations, they built crops, they had the animals, they had the livestock, the gardens, the land, everything was set. All they had to do was fight and kill the people. And it was all there. They took it like invasion, took it. 2,000 years later, oh no, it's not fair. The Jews, they're not, this is not fair. They're not supposed to do this. This is not it. It's the wrong way. So now they took it back. Yeah, the Lord divided because they refused Jesus. But Jesus here is still coming back for them. So he said, pray for the Hebrews. Pray for them. Pray that they repent. Even Paul, that was Paul's prayer in Romans 10. Like, I pray for them. But they, they lack the knowledge of the righteousness of God. They lack, they have the zeal of God, but they don't have the righteousness of God. They lack that. And Christians, too, they lack that. They lack the righteousness of God. They have a zeal, they have a passion. Like, I love Jesus. Jesus is so, oh, OMG. Jesus is so lit. Jesus is on fire. Jesus is my rock. Faith over fear. God is greater than my problems. God knows me better. God knows my heart. 
Like, yeah, you, you, you're you emphasizing God a lot. Like, oh, you're, you're a person. You're a Christian. Believe me. Yeah, I'm a Christian. Believe me. Okay. Yeah, but when things get shaky and hard, your family come against you. Like, what? Your job come against you. People come against you. Oh, no. This, I didn't sign up for this. Like, no. I just, I just want to go to heaven. Like, no, that's not enough. You need to work. People go to heaven. They go to work. Even you go to heaven, there's still work to do. What I, why did I say that? Remember the saints in heaven, when John in Revelation, he saw the person writing and he bowed like hey the man said hey don't bow i'm just like you i died i'm i'm just like you don't bow to me because you got work to do and there are saints who are praying but it's not mean we pray to those saints when you go to roman catholics we don't pray to dead things that's idolatry that is it's a b word um basically you praying to the dead i forgot what it meant but that's idolatry that's evil witchcraft we don't do that but the saints, like, no, we don't pray to saints, dead people. We don't pray to Mary. Mary is just blessed because she gave birth to the Savior, gave birth to God. But does that mean she's a God and she's to be worshipped and praised? Like, no, no. Jesus then bless his mom, cares her, and worship her. Like, no. He came to do the work of his father. He came to do the business of his father. So you, as a Christian, you need to do the work of the father. I do the thanks of my father. What you see me do, you see my father do. Because I only obey him. And if you reject me, you reject the one that sent me, which is God. And the only way to get to God is to go through Jesus Christ. People think, oh, I need rocks. I need chocolate. I need good vibes only. I need this. I need this music. I need this drug. I need this. I got to go to this massage, soul searching therapy, just to get access to the spirit. Yeah, you can. You have access to some spirits, all right? Devils, demons, but powers. That's what you have access to. Not just through that, even through the music, the culture. Oh, set the culture. You can't make it right a Christian. No, 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 this and that. It's not good. The, the missionaries, you can't do that. You need the culture. It's what makes the world go. No, it does not. It is killing the world. It is killing the world. Why do you think these nations would serve other gods, millions, thousands of gods, don't prosper? Oh, they need education. No. You give them an education, now it's going to be smart, dead people, smart idolaters, worship other gods. That's all they're going to do. Oh, because God already cursed them, but now you want to give them a step ahead. Oh, give them technology, give them access to read. We need um, remote teachers on Indeed, this place, teach them English, teach them this, do this. Yeah, but they hate God. They hit God. Well, education is going to help the people. It's going to help the land. No, it does not. It does not. It just makes people much eviler. Because now they're trying to find ways to come against God. I was in a secular school for... I'm trying to think. Sorry. I got to 2015 from high school. I was in college. So I got 15 years in secular school, three years of college. Yeah. They will always tell you my, my first year college, second semester, first year college, second semester, and my professor in macro microeconomics. He tells us every day he will make us watch this countdown clock of the depth America is in, the economy, how much depth we are in. This number just go higher and higher every day. And he would tell us every day, you guys are the future. You guys got to know how to drop these numbers, how to fix this, how to, you are the future. English class, you need to try to write. Don't put no religious thing in there. That's biased information. It's not factual. It's not evidence. Not everybody believes in it. So you need to go through these people. Yeah, you have atheists trying to teach you things. Atheists way of theology, atheist way of knowledge, like anti-Christ, they teach you. Oh, that's why, that's why I go to Christian school, go to Christian school. That's even worse. I know a good Christian school, but yet they teach as a class to tell you that Jesus is not everything. Jesus is not always the answer. Like, what? Like, people just messed up. People are messed up. They think if you bring Jesus, it's going to bring war. It's going to bring problems. Like, without Jesus, there's still war. There's going to be with people people are there's going to be some divisions there's going to be issues with people period gods of religion there's going to be jealousy there's going to be hatred and greed 
And that's what makes war period by itself. Oh, no, it's Jesus Christ. No, it's not. People hate Jesus Christ. But he's not the reason for wars. Because Jesus did not come here to fight the people. He just told them, hey, what you doing is wicked. And people get mad. People rather fight, beat up to blood, death, pain. I pay you. I bet you this money to fight. I win. But tell somebody they you did this and that. What? Oh, no. Mm. All hell breaks through the real estate. Like, yes, they vicious, mad. Like, what? You can't judge me. Offended feelings are hurt. Like, you either get beat up. Just get some money. Like, come on now. Look, look how messed up your mind is. Your mind is so messed up. You're so prideful in your own thinking. You always think you're a good person. I'm a good person. I'm going to heaven. No, no, you're not. God said if you do this, 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 you're not going to heaven. Read the Bible, people. Read the Bible. Read Genesis 19. Read Romans 1. Read Revelations. Come on now. Read Corinthians. It tells you like what kind of people are going to go to hell. Like, those who are not going to enter, to enter into the kingdom of heaven. The word of God tells you. So don't think, oh, you're, you're an exception. Like, no, I'm special. God sent me special. Like, yeah, you're an apple of this eye, but you need to look like him. If you don't, you're being rejected. You're going to hell. You need to repent because God is not playing. He is serious. God is very serious. Blood was shed. Blood. The blood of Jesus was shed. Jesus is Lord. And Jesus is God. And God shed blood for you and I because he loves us. But he hates when we don't act like him. We don't live the way he says. We don't live up to his standards. See, like... But his standards are too hard. Oh, yeah, and that's why he gives you his Holy Spirit to help you overcome. Why? Because the flesh is weak, but the spirit indeed is willing. He's going to help your spirit, man. Because your body, soul, and spirit. And his Holy Spirit is going to be in you at the water baptism. You pray for the Holy Ghost fire to come in you. And he's going to equip you. Your spirit, man. And your spirit, man, is going to get your body and your soul in agreement. Like, hey, the word of God says this. We have to do this. He will give you strength. So that's why... You depend on him and lean not on to your own understanding. And it's so beautiful. Just reading the Old Testament, Psalms, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah. The whole Bible Proverbs, Jesus said the same exact thing, literally. I'm not here to cry for him. It's like, no, but it just shows you how consistent God is. He's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And yet people don't believe him because people have ambitions, people have desires, people have things to do. I got things to do. I'm on a time. Like, I want this money, this amount of money in my bank account at this time. I need to know how to retire early. I need to learn how to save money. Like, yeah, great, you need some material things, but that's not the focus. Because once the money's gone, the economy crashes, things mess up. What you going to do now? What? What? What did all that time, all that was lost? was lost. Like what what is it for you to gain? You lose your whole. You gain the world and lose your soul. Come on now. You gain what you want. You get what you want. But you lose your whole you go lose your soul. Basically just go to hell. For all the efforts you did on earth. You worked so hard for how many years? You did it for your haters. You did it for those who said you you what you couldn't you you couldn't graduate. You couldn't do this. You couldn't do this. Like, you're, you're too dumb, you're this, that, you're not, you're, like, yeah, you did it for, you, you did this to prove something to people who are going to die just like you one day. The God Almighty, the everlasting God, the God who judges nations, who judges people's hearts, who tries to rinse the parts, who is the life, the truth, and the way, he is going to judge you one day. And you have to be ready for that. And you have to be ready to stand before the Lord. And a lot of people think, when I see God, I'm going to tell him sorry for everything I did in my life. Like, no, you do that right now. Lord, sorry for what I'm doing right now. Sorry for loving men when I'm a man. Sorry for loving a woman when I love a woman. Sorry for loving money. Sorry for loving my wife more than I love you. Sorry for loving my husband more than I love you. Sorry for loving my children. Sorry for loving my job more than I love you. Sorry for loving myself more than I love you, God. Forgive me. Move the selfishness, move the idolatry in my mind, move the rebellion, the stubbornness. So I don't want to give these things up, but yet I see how it's harming me, but I don't want to let it go. Forgive me for being so worldly in my mentality. I'm like American, I'm like an Irish, I'm like a German, I'm like a Russian, I'm like a Jamaican, I'm like a Haitian, I'm like an Antiguan, I'm like a Cuban. I'm like, yeah, I'm like the world, right? Wash me, forgive me, cleanse me. Because you look like the nation you're from. You look like the, the place you represent, the flags, 
the shoes, the hat, the lingo, the swag, or whatever, the banner, I'm this, I'm that. Whatever curse is on that nation, regardless of your what your country, your nation profess, oh, we're Christians. America said they're Christians, but yet they look at the judgment, look at the decision making. That's not Christian. It's not. So your nation, and are they a Christian enough to confront the evil things like, hey, this is unacceptable. We do not permit this. What kind of laws are being passed? What are they doing? You gotta be mindful. Like, are, are your people doing this? Like, no, all right, they're not representing Jesus Christ. They represent the devil, Satan, the pride of life, lust of the eyes, and the lust of the flesh. So we cannot look like our nation, our backgrounds, our culture, our world around us. We can't be multicultural. Like, no, you need to be Holy Ghost filled, Christian, filled with the Holy Ghost. Sons of God, full of light. And you cannot hide the light. Because remember how we see the man with the one talent who hid it in under in the bush or the dirt. Or whoever was masking it. What did you do with when I gave you? Oh, because I know who you are. I know how things are. So I hid it. I didn't do anything with it because I didn't want to lose it. Yeah, people do that. Forfeit the things God gives them and don't care and don't appreciate what he gives you. So how to appreciate, how to work with what I have or what I know, how to apply it. Obey, trust in the Lord with all your heart, mind, and strength. Because he is yours and we are his. So you need to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. And you will look more and more like Jesus Christ than Satan, the sons of Belial. We're not the sons of Belial. We are the sons of God. We are the sons of God. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. Jesus is our big brother. God is our father, our big brother. The Prince of Peace, Lord of Lords, King of Kings, Counselor, Jaira, Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and the end. So we have to believe that. And we have to be courageful. We cannot be discouraged or just tired. Like it's hard being a Christian. I didn't think, I didn't know it would get to this point. He said, People before you went through it. So you're going to go through it too. But the thing different about those who were before us, they didn't have the Holy Spirit in them. We have the Holy Spirit in us. So we can overcome. So there's more grace given. Uh, yes, there's a lot of evil going on in the land. But God, His grace, His power, has given us more access. We need to position ourselves that we want to cry out unto the Lord. And He will heal your land. He will heal you, help you, change you, make you more like Him. As long as you allow Him to. So we confront the enemy by addressing things in our hearts. Or how we see, how we take, how we perceive things. Because how we perceive is how we're going to act it out. So what goes on in the heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. You're going to play it out. So you see no self-control with the mouth. You see bitterness. You see complaining. You see laziness. You say this, but you don't do it. You don't live up what you say. You're breaking promise. Like, you're inconsistent. You're double-minded. You're a backbiter. You're a liar. Only God could judge me. Come on now, people. Get over that. Get over that. Because God has people here to help judge you too, help you out. Because you think you're good in your own eyes. Yeah, because I was hurt. This person molested me. This person did this to me. And so I'm this way. I don't know. Since I was four years old, I, I thought this way. Like, oh, understood. But that's the way that sins are unto a man. But the end of his death. Well, so what you're thinking is that you're going to go to hell thinking that way. But I can't hope it. Like, yeah, God understands the desires and the lust of the flesh. That's why he's here to heal you. So you need to flee from youthful lust. And then he will work in you. So there's a purpose in your life. Suicide is not the answer. Unforgiveness is not the answer. Forgive those who trespass you. Yes, you were hurt. God answered this prayer. Like, yes, understood. But you have to keep working. You have to keep working. It doesn't matter. Paul prayed about something three times. Jesus himself came to Paul. So he has access to God directly. He prays to God three times about a matter. And God says his grace is sufficient enough. So what God thinks is good for us, it's good. And we need our hearts. We need a soul that is well with it. We need to come in agreement. Like, okay, God, this is what, you, this is what I have. This is what you want to give me. All right, well, let me appreciate and work with what I have. So you can do the rest. And you be glorified and not myself. 
So remember, then the Lord rewards those who diligently seek him. So if you obey, you do his will, according to his word, according to his purpose for your life, he will reward you for it. But if you don't do it, he'll reject you and destroy you.